Hey my friend, today I'm gonna show you five chords that are tricky to play but they sound gorgeous. So if you're looking for a, a challenge and some stretches on the fretboard, this is a lesson for you. But just before starting, those five chords are actually in one of my bonus guides uh, that I give to my viewers, which is called 10 of my favorite chords. So it's five chords out of this guide of 10 chords. And now you're probably asking, how can I get this guide? Well, this is one of my over delivers when you sign up for my free mini course on ambient guitar chords, which you can get first link in the description box. So if you sign up for the first time for my free mini course, you would get today the whole 45 minutes mini course teaching you about spread triads and harmonization and lots of useful stuff uh, to play ambient guitar chords and then tomorrow you would get an exclusive tutorial that you cannot find anywhere else on how to build your ambient guitar chords and on the second day you would get my bonus guide of my 10 favorite chords and the chord charts of the five chords I'm showing you in this lesson plus five other ones are included in it and I have other bonuses that I send to your inbox after. So I'm all about over delivering. So if this is something you want, you can sign up first link in the description box. Okay, now let's get to the chords. The first one is an A minor 11 and it sounds like this. Beautiful, but very challenging because it stretches both ways. So actually how I would approach playing this chord is to start by just putting my fingers that can be relaxed first. So I'm gonna put my middle finger and my ring finger on the fifth frets, on the fourth and third strings, and I, I'm gonna make sure that I can be very relaxed on this. Right, and then it's important that your thumb is not on the top here because if it, it stays on the top, it's gonna be very hard to stretch with your other fingers. So you have to put your thumb on the middle of the neck here, pretty much at the same place where your uh, middle finger is aligned here. So at the middle here, and when you are placed like this, you have room to stretch your fingers both ways. So once you are relaxed and your thumb is in the right position, you can proceed to stretch your index finger first and reach the third fret of the second string and make sure it sounds clean. And then you can stretch your pinky also until you reach the seventh fret of the first string and make sure it's clean also. And then you can play the whole thing. At first, if it's too hard for you, you might be tempted to play on the edge of the frets. And I mean, it's okay if it sounds good, but maybe it's gonna buzz if you do. So try to go just a little bit farther to reach it. And if it's too hard, you can just jump 12 frets higher and play the same thing up top, which is also very, very beautiful. The second chord is an E major 9 and it's actually very tricky, it sounds like this. So basically this chord is actually an E add 9 but I added a 7th in the chord. So you can start with a regular E major open chord. And then if you want to add a ninth in the chord, you can replace your ring finger by your pinky two frets higher. So now the shape is like this. That's just an, a nice sparkle in the chord, right? So this is the regular one. And this is the add nine. And then what I did is that uh, I replaced my pinky with my ring finger, which is in this way, it's almost impossible to play, just so that I can play the seventh of the chord, which is on the fourth fret, second string, and to have that little friction on top. But if you, you start with this shape and you replace with your ring, it's almost impossible. So you, it's better if you start putting your pinky and your ring first on the fourth frets and you can play all notes individually. 
So it's actually all already very beautiful. And then once you're comfortable with this, you can stretch your index first until you reach the first fret on the third string. And you could play this chord just like this if you want. But the challenge is to uh, reach the second fret of the fifth string with your ring. So it's gonna fall a little bit naturally if you pronate your hand. But if it doesn't, you can really pronate more your hand to the right so that your uh, middle finger can reach the second fret. So it's a very hard chord because uh, it's the infamous stretch between your uh, middle and your ring fingers, right? For the Star Trek fans. But uh, it's much easier if you place the fourth uh, frets first. All right, the third chord is very difficult, but in a totally opposite way. This is an E flat add 9 11, and it's played like this. So you see, this is a cluster of fingers on the same fret. So you play all of your four fingers on the sixth fret. So the pinky is on the first string, the ring is on the second string, the middle finger is on the fourth string, and the index is on the fifth string. And this chord is very particular because it's very, very rare that you can have open positions in E flat because the guitar is made, uh, at least in standard tuning, to uh, be uh, to play in E, right? In E major or E minor because you have lots of open strings. But usually when you play in E flat, you have nothing that you can open because it's just one semitone down compared to E. But in that case, if I open the G string, the open third, with my E flat note, it makes a major third interval. So I can play a E flat major chord with an open string this way. And then if I play everything on the sixth string, it's really beautiful. And it's gonna be harder for you, especially if you have big fingers, right? Sausage fingers, bass player fingers uh, on the, the fretboard here because that, that might be too clustered in the same place. But that's a chord that I love. The fourth chord is brutal. That's a G add 9 11. So it's the same kind of uh, chord structure than the previous one, but it's gonna be played like this. One of my favorite chords, but one of the stretchier ones. So in fact, when you want to get big stretches, it's always easier to stretch your index compared to your pinky, right? So the best way is to place all of your fingers, but not the index first. So you can place the pinky on the fifth fret, you can place the ring finger on the fourth fret, and you can place the middle finger on the third fret. And try to be as relaxed as possible. There is some string skipping, but uh, it, it can be really relaxed. Right? And then, once again, that's the same principle. Your thumb should be here, not here. If not, it's gonna be very hard to do something with your index. But if your thumb is here, you can then stretch with your index and try to reach the first fret of the second string. Uh, sorry, <laughs> like this. And once again, if it's too difficult, just jump 12 frets higher and that's gonna be more comfortable this way. Right, and the fifth chord I'm gonna show you is not that stretchy, but once again, the difficult part is somewhere else. So it's an F minor 9 chord, and it's played like this. So it might be the easiest one of all of them, but it's kind of the same thing than the third chord. Uh, if you have bigger fingers, that's gonna be harder to do because you have to open the third string and let it ring. Uh, sometimes when we fret notes, like with my ring finger on the 10th fret of the fourth string, sometimes it's gonna touch the third string and it, it prevents it from ringing, right? So you have to really play on the tip of your fingers, especially on the fourth and second strings, 
to make sure that everything can, can ring properly. And then you can place the rest. Because if the third string doesn't ring, this is just an OK chord. I call this a double spreaded triad. I made a lesson on it a few months ago. You can click to have the full lesson. But it's just an OK chord. But when you, you play on the tip of your fingers and you let the third string ring, suddenly it's so dark and there's a nice friction. So there you go, my, four, my five chords, an A minor 11, E major 9, E flat at 9 11, G at 9 11, and F minor 9. So beautiful lush chords to add to your bag of tricks. And once again, if you want more help with spread triad kind of chords like this one, and if you want to download the guide of my 10 uh, favorite chords, those are only five of them, you can click on the first link in the description box and enroll in my free mini course. Not only you're gonna get the 45 minutes free course that's gonna uh, teach you super, super cool chords, you can download the chord chart, in it and then the day after you have an exclusive tutorial and then the day after you, you can download my 10 favorite chords guide and then you have other bonuses so I'm all about over delivering if you sign up so you can click first link in the description box to get it so thanks for watching my video I hope you like these chords and until next time au revoir